Tonight, the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network presents Purdue basketball from Evanston, Illinois. We are at Welsh Ryan Arena in McGaw Hall here in Evanston, where the Purdue Boilermakers will be battling the Northwestern Wildcats. Good evening, I'm Joe Payne, and in just a moment, Bob Ford will join me as we welcome you to week two of the 1987 Big Ten basketball season. The Boilermakers, ranked number five in the nation, come in with a record of 2-0 and in the conference, 10-1 and overall. Meanwhile, the Wildcats of Coach Bill Foster have a record of 5-7. and seven. They are 0-2 in the conference. They were rolling along with a record of 5-2, and two, but went on the road and lost their last five, including conference games to Minnesota and Iowa. Meanwhile, the Boilermakers, Bob Ford, were opening against uh, Michigan and Michigan State and did very well, led by Troy Lewis in those. Troy had a, just a great game against Michigan. He finally found that shooting touch that he's been looking for all season long. And Troy is a key to this Purdue club. He shoots well from the outside and does a lot of things that keeps the ball club going. He just took over the Michigan game in the first half, did an outstanding job of getting the ball into the hoop when the Boilermakers needed it most. And he, of course, uh, came up with his career high of 39 points. He has scored in double figures in 15 straight games. He's a Mr. Indiana Basketball, a co-award winner. There is it also a Mr. Basketball on the Northwestern squad. I think Northwestern's got an outstanding player in, in Mr. Gross. He's a super guy. Uh, he's able to really hustle. Had some problems in the summertime. Had a, a problem with his leg. Ended up with a blood clot that got to the lung. Was very serious. Uh, but he's come along and he's back into the lineup. He's not necessarily starting, but he's the second leading scorer with 10 points a game. Uh, you see him there on the screen. Jeff Gross, number 43. Excellent player. Sean Morris, who is the other top scorer for the this club likes to play the forward position but they've had to play him in the middle because they've had injuries to the other two big people who are not even suited up tonight and we're going to have a good crowd almost a sellout if not a sellout for this Big Ten battle between Purdue and Northwestern and we'll be back to check on the starting lineup for tonight's game in just a moment I really like living in Indiana I like the weather the people between these two schools on the hardwood, the Boilermakers dominate the series, having won 85 and lost only 33. Boilermakers, by the way, have uh, won the last six in a row over Northwestern, including last year at West Lafayette when Purdue was 85 and 64. Uh, here the score was 65 to 50 in favor of the Purdue Boilermakers. But on this court, the Boilermakers have had some troubles over the years. The Wildcats have won three of their last seven with Purdue here and five of their last 12 with the uh, last time winning 1983 uh, here in Chicago, 66 to 55. Let's go now to the public address announcer and the starting lineups for tonight's game. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting lineups for tonight's game. For Purdue at forward, a 6'7 junior from Toledo, Ohio, number 33, Todd Mitchell. And for the Wildcats at forward, a 6'10 junior from Altoona, Iowa, number 25, Sean Morris. For Purdue at forward, a 6'5 senior from Washington, Illinois, number 20, Doug Lee. And for the Wildcats at forward, a 6'7 freshman from Weston, Connecticut, number 44, Don Polite. For Purdue at center, a 6'10 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 35, Melvin McCants. And for the Wildcats at center, a 6'11 freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 32, Brian Ross. For Purdue at guard, a 6'4 junior from Anderson, Indiana, number 23, Troy Lewis. And for the Wildcats at guard, a 6'2 senior from Springfield, Ohio, number 14, Elliot Fullen. For Purdue at guard, a 6'2 junior from Evanston, Illinois, number 21, Everett Stevens. 
And for the Wildcats at guard, a 6'1 senior from Harvey, Illinois, number 20, Sean Watts. Purdue is coached by Gene Cady. The Wildcats are coached by Bill Foster, assisted by Bill And there you have the starting lineups. Uh, the last time, Bob, that Purdue met a team that was coached by Bill Foster it was South Carolina a few years ago and that was not a good night for Coach Foster. He, he suffered a, a heart attack after that game. They're, they're good friends, Coach Katie and Coach Foster. The officials, Ed Marisich, Randy Drury, and Burl Sell. It wasn't a particularly good night for Purdue either as no. South Carolina was a victor, so I'm sure that uh, Coach Katie would like to get back on the winning track against Bill Foster and if the Boilermakers play the way that they're capable of playing, certainly as we look at the lineups, they should win this ball game. I think the Pressure will be a key for Purdue to get into their defense early and get the fast break going and not allow uh, the Wildcats to get in any kind of an offensive mode and uh, feel like they have some confidence against this uh, ball club that traded number five in one pole, number six in the other. The Boilermakers are averaging nearly 88 points a game. Meanwhile, Northwestern's been able to put up only, uh, well, nearly 61 points of contest. The opposition has been outscoring Northwestern 67.6 to 60.8. The Boilermakers defense average in points against is 66.5. The Boilermakers shooting 53% from the field. The Wildcats 43%. Certainly on paper it looks like a really lopsided ball game because uh, even if the Boilermakers held Northwestern to what would be the Boilermakers defensive average, Northwestern would be overachieving in terms of their offensive average. So uh, I guess the truth will come from the court, but the Boilermakers should have an easy time in this one. And the ball is up and the Wildcats get it and it is controlled by Sean Morris. The team's leading score number 25, 14 outside is Elliot Bullen. He's averaging 9.3. Number 20, Sean Watts, his average is 9.1. At the top of the key is Elliot uh, Fullen. The Portland Lakers are playing the man-to-man, -man, and that's been the defense for most of the time. In the back door and scoring first is Don Polite, and the Wildcats take a 2-0 lead. And we have a timeout already called by the Purdue Boilermakers, stopping things with only 27 seconds gone by. The timeout is called. You're watching Purdue basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue is down to Northwestern 2 0. Well, there's a man working on a deadline tonight, Bill Benner, out of the Indianapolis Star. He'll be writing the story, and uh, he'll be pressed at the end, probably. Boilermakers came out and saw Northwestern in a spread offense, Joe, which I think. Uh, is a very fine coaching move. They're trying to take advantage of the fact that Purdue likes to press down on the defensive end of the court. They spread it out, and as soon as the Boilermakers overplayed, they went back door. George King used that a few years ago down in Bloomington against the Hoosiers and was able to come out with a win. I think that's the quickest timeout we've had called. So far, a double team. Lewis gets the ball, takes the short jumper, and he hits his first shot tonight. Remember, he's coming off of a game of 20, uh, 39, 15 straight games in which he is been in double figures. The game is tied at two. Sean Watts with the ball. Now it goes over to Morris. Morris comes down and McCant stays with him. McCant's playing before some of the home folks probably that came over to watch him. Bullen guarded by Stevens who is an Evanston graduate also. Morris Drives within 10 feet, puts it up there, and it bounces off. Battle for the rebound. Who's going to get it? Pulled down there by the Boilermakers, Todd Mitchell. Lewis gives it to Lee inside the three-point marker. Fires good. Lee's basket gives Purdue the lead 4-2. Interesting that McCants will have to be playing against Morris. Morris is very mobile for a big man and handles the ball very well. And twice now he's been able to go by Big Mel on the, uh, the middle of the court there. So it may be that McCants has to back off just a little bit on the pressure. And Everett Stevens uh, was guilty of a foul outside trying to flick the ball away. Got into the eye there of number 20. Now let's look at it again. Here's the play. There you see Everett going inside. And he definitely hit Sean Watts in the eye, and that is very, very painful. Everett walked up immediately and said, gee, I'm sorry, I didn't really go after your head. I was going after the ball, and that makes you feel bad as a defensive player when you hit someone in the face like that. It's a very painful injury. So it looks like that Sean Watts, the senior out of Harvey, Illinois, 9-1 average is going to have to go and sit down a while as the trainer works with him and coach Bill Foster in his first year here at Northwestern. 24th year of uh, head coaching makes a substitution. 
Injuries have been a problem for Northwestern as we talked about. Brian Schwabe uh, broke his foot. Brian Pitts broke his hand and now Watts uh, are, is on the bench there with an eye injury. We don't know how serious that is but he was really having some problems as he left the court. And so number 44 Don Polite puts the ball in play. And George with the ball. Comes down here to number 44, Polite. Polite working against Lee. Here's the sin inside. It goes to Morris. And the ball is loose, picked up there by Stevens, and he sends it ahead. And now here's the steal on the other way. And driving is George. Drives down, gets the ball off there. Uh, to Morris, he can't get it. Lee gets it, throws it to Everett Stevens, and it is showtime already. Stevens with the basket, the Boilermakers lead 6-2. Jeff Gross, 6-3 sophomore from Warsaw, can't hold the ball and is taken away by Lewis. He scores his second basket. And the Boilermakers have scored eight unanswered points. And the Northwestern Wildcats want a timeout with 17-23 to play in the first half. You're watching Purdue Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The Boilermakers lead the Wildcats by a score of 8-2. Here's Everett Stevens just a few seconds ago with the stuff after the steal. And the, the Boilermakers are up 8-2, to two, scoring the last four field goals, a couple by Lewis, one by Stevens, and one by Lee. There's a good stat on the screen there, Joe. 18.9 turnovers forced by the Boilermakers. Here is Polite getting the basket, his second of the evening. It is 8-4, to four, and that stopped a run of four straight baskets by the Boilermakers. Purdue shooting four out of four. The Wildcats now are two out of four. The zone there by the Wildcats. Troy Lewis for his third in a row. He has six. And is a three-pointer, they say. So it'll be seven points for him. And the Boilermakers lead 11 to four. Or some shooting the last two games for Troy. Here's Polite stop there. Double team ball knocked away. It belongs to the Purdue Boilermakers. I think the uh, the early pressure by Northwestern has gotten Purdue into the ball game much quicker than it might have gotten into it had Northwestern played a little slower tempo. This is certainly uh, to the Boilermakers' advantage to get it up tempo and moving, and uh, doing a very good job against Northwestern's 2-3 matchup zone, which the Boilermakers had trouble with against MSU. Wildcats have three turnovers. Lee sends it back outside. It goes to Everett Stevens, cross court to Mitchell. Mitchell with a jumper, and uh, that's the first miss, I believe, for Purdue. And here come the Wildcats. Gross on the drive. It was knocked away by Mitchell. Lewis has the ball. He outran it, lost it. It'll be out of bounds to the Wildcats. Excellent effort by Gross as he went down the lane quickly on Lewis, but it was Mitchell coming over to help out from the weak side. Made a great block off the backboard. So it'll be thrown in by Don Polite for the Wildcats. Playing with the absent of Sean Watts, who got his eye hurt a while ago. Here's the pass inside. Knocked away by Everett Stevens as Fulham missed the shot. Lee brings it up, gets to Lewis. Lewis back outside, and Everett Stevens will set it up. The zone for the Wildcats. Lee from three points. Lee hits his second basket of the night. He has five, and Purdue leads 14 to four. Two out of two from three-point range. Five-second call against the Wildcats. Four turnovers for Coach Bill Foster's Wildcats, who have lost their five, last five in a row, all on the road. Wildcats are not playing that poorly tonight, Joe. They're having some problems against the Purdue pressure, as most teams have had, but I guess it's a little frustrating to get breakaway layups like they've had a couple of times and just have athletic ability uh, beat them in terms of being able to block the ball from the backside. Lewis to Stevens. Bounces it to Lee. And Lee is three in a row. He has seven. He and Lewis have 14 of the 16 points Purdue has on the board. Purdue leads by 12. On his radio show the other night, Gene Cady said that Lee one night was going to break out of the slump and have 39, just like Lewis did the other night. Sean Morris drives, can't get it. Ross can't hold the ball. 
Doyle Lewis up quickly. Stops, shoots, too long. First miss of the night for him. Underneath, it's picked up there by Sean Morris for the Wildcats. Here comes Northwestern. Elliott Fuller on the dribble. Everett Stevens is on him. Only one foul in this game, and that's against Everett Stevens. Gross drives. He puts it up. Bounces off. No. Rebounded by Mitchell. Everett Stevens through the traffic. Down to Lee. From three. No. Missed it. Morris got the rebound. Wildcats are on the run. Gross with the ball. Gets Stevens up. In underneath. Missing the shot as Ross. Follow through. Missed. Troy Lewis has the ball. Gross tried to knock it away and fell down. Troy did a good job of avoiding gross because he was in great position to pick up that charging foul but Lewis was able to stop it on a dime and get the ball back and bring it down the court. Boilermakers lead by 12. Lee right wing. Purdue very patient. McCants sends it outside. Back to McCants. Now to Mitchell from about 20 feet. No good. Rebounded by Sean Morris. Here come the Wildcats who work it down the left side frequently. Elliott Fuller gives it to Gross. He gets by Troy Lewis. Stopped by Mitchell. Puts it up anyway. No. McCants rebounds. Taken away from McCants and scored by Ross. His first basket. Only the third basket for the Wildcats who are down by 10. Gross made a beautiful move on the baseline with a behind the back dribble and just as he got away from Lewis bang there was Mitchell like a brick wall in front of him and stopped him and caused the bad shot lead to Lewis Troy fires missed two in a row pulled off there by Sean Morris the leading rebounder for the Wildcats getting nearly nine a game Lewis was very tentative on that shot he short armed it just like maybe he was worried about the shot after missing the one a moment ago Fuller Guarded by Lee, gets it away to Morris. Back out to Fuller. He'll take a three-pointer. It's no good. Mitchell rebounds. Lewis the outlet pass. Lee fires. He's hot. Lee gets two. He has nine. He's Purdue's leading score tonight. The Boilermakers have an 18-6 lead. We have a timeout. Called by Northwestern. The clock shows 13 to 10 to play in the first half. You're watching Purdue basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue leads Northwestern 18 to 6. Farm Bureau Insurance and its nearly 700 agents of the state of Indiana delighted to be presenting Purdue basketball again this year. Also one of our co-sponsors is the Milk Promotion Services of Indiana, your Indiana dairy farmer, and Elanco Products Company, makers of Trefland and Sanaloyan soybean herbicides. Well, the makers have gotten off to a good start, Joe, and uh, credit the defense and the, uh, the quick pace that the Wildcats are playing. Purdue has just not had time to settle down and uh, worry too much about what was going on on the floor. They've been playing on instinct, and it's been very good tonight. Well, the Boilermakers are led by Doug Lee with nine. Troy Lewis has seven. Everett Stevens has the other basket. Boilermakers pressuring in the backcourt. Bo Kukus, number 23, came in during the timeout. Driving down here is Buford, who also came in. He didn't get it. And uh, Tony Jones has came in, and Kip Jones gets the ball. A lot of substitutions during that half. Tony Jones again made an outstanding block on the shot, as he did uh, again in the Michigan game. Kip Jones to Troy Lewis, way over to Tony Jones. Dicks outside, Everett Stevens to Troy Lewis, drives within range, fires no. A blocking foul is going to be called on the Wildcats. It'll be foul on Bo Kukus. Only the second foul called in tonight's game. The other one was against John Watts. It's a good move by Troy. Cook is trying to get into position. Didn't get there quickly enough as Troy was already off the court. And he'll have a chance to shoot a couple of free throws. And he has been red hot from the free throw line, shooting 85% on the season. That's the best on the club. He's 28 out of 33. 13 out of 15 the other night. He has his eight point of the night. The Boilermakers now lead 19 to 6. They were down 2 nothing, ripped off 8. Northwestern scored. Purdue scored 8 more. Northwestern scored. Now the Boilermakers have scored 3. Now 4. That's 9 points for Troy Lewis. Boilermakers are up by 14. They double team. Petrovic. Milo Petrovic. And the foul is going to be called on the Boilermakers, a reach-in foul. It'll be called on Jeff Arnold. Boilermakers have gone to their bench really early. And uh, Troy Lewis and Everett Stevens, the only uh, starters in there here, is a steal and a basket by Everett Stevens, his second basket. And the Boilermakers lead 22-6. And again, 
a walking violation on the Wildcats, and Northwestern cannot handle the Purdue pressure. Purdue is bigger than Northwestern in the backcourt. They're able to put 6'5 and 6'4 people as uh, uh, Everett Stevens will go out. Troy or Todd Lewis will. Well, I'm going to get it right in a minute. Todd Mitchell will come into the lineup, number 33, to replace him. So uh, the Boilermakers have a more traditional lineup in the game right now than they did a moment ago. Petrovich goes out, and Jeff Gross, the Warsaw, Indiana product, comes in for the Wildcats. The Wildcats in a 2 3 zone. Mitchell comes back outside. They go to Lewis, right wing, now to Jones. In Inside. Jones throws it through the hands of Jeff Arnold, picked up for the Wildcats, and here comes Gross on the dribble. Nearly eight minutes gone by. Boilermakers leading 22 to 6. Gross with the ball, works to the baseline, takes the short jumper, can't get it to fall. Here's the foul going to be called over the back on Troy Lewis. Or is it Tony Jones? Troy Lewis, I think. Troy Lewis gets the foul. Here's a look at the uh, from the baseline. What happened? There's a shot by Gross. Pretty good shot. Didn't fall. Troy just totally out of position. Commits the foul, and uh, it'll be Tim Fisher who comes into the lineup replacing Lewis. And now the only starter on the floor for Purdue would be Todd Mitchell. Lewis leaves with nine points, including a three-pointer. Wildcats having trouble getting the ball in. Now they are successful. Kukas with the ball, drives up, no, and the foul is going to be called on Arnold. That's the second on Jeff. That's the fourth on the team. Jeff has had some troubles with uh, fouls in recent ball games, and he's working very hard to help this Boilermaker club, and it probably is one of the most dedicated players on the squad. There you see him move just a bit off of the court, and as he did that, that's where he committed the foul. He was in good position had he held it, but he picks it up, and Kukas will go the line and have two. He's out of Cherville, Indiana. Shoots 9 of 18 at the free throw line. First uh, free throw attempt for the Wildcats tonight. Like Purdue, they, as a team, are not the best free throw shooting squad, shooting only 634. Purdue 646. First time I saw Kukas was when Lake Central was in the Sima State in Lafayette, and first thing that they did was throw the ball high, and he stuffed it, and really, uh, they did a good job that evening in beating Jefferson. Mitchell tries to flip it down, and it is stolen away by Buford. Elliot Pullen with the ball, goes down in the corner, knocked away by Jones, retrieved, and shot is put up and in by the Wildcats. And making the basket is Sean Morris, his first. It's 22-8. It's the first time Morris has had the ball in the right position. He's been out on the court quite a bit. That time they got him down low on the block, he just turned around with that soft little jump shot and put it home. Purdue has had runs of eight, eight, and six. Leading now 22 to 8, 11 minutes to play, first half. Fisher with the ball. Kip Jones, right wing. Mitchell in the corner. Mitchell lost the ball. Two turnovers for Mitchell, threw it away the last time down and lost that one. Now Melvin McCants is coming back in. And uh, Lee comes back in. Tony Jones working against Fulham. Purdue stays in the man-to-man. -man. This is Terry Buford with the ball. Buford gets rid of it. Stolen by Tony Jones. Going for the solo and puts it in. Jones with a basket. And Purdue leads 24-8. Jones has really played well and since last weekend. I think he really got off to a good start against Michigan and really brought his confidence back. He played well early in the season, then had a little drought, and now he's back. John Morris guarded by McCants and a little acting, but McCants is guilty of a foul, blocking foul. Substitution, I think, for the Boilermakers after we take a look at the replay. Again, it's the quickness of Sean Morris because he is a forward and not a center. He's able to go around McCants. Mel is not able to get in the good body position to pick up the foul, and uh, he's charged with it instead. Everett Stevens comes back in. Tony Jones goes out. Tim Weiss, number 42, with the 2.3 average, is in for the Wildcats. That is Weiss with the ball. Drives all the way down, puts it up, and missed it. Mitchell rebounds. Loneliest moment of your life is when you go in uncontested for a layup and let it roll off the front of the rim. Mitchell, by the way, is getting nearly seven rebounds a game. He's second high on the team. Everett Stevens for the alley-oop goes to Mitchell, and he is fouled by Tim Weiss, his first. 
Substitution, Troy Lewis is back in for the Boilermakers, and Fisher goes out. It's a break for Purdue, the fact that the foul was committed here because the, the pass is off the mark. There you see Mitchell really had to make a great play just to get it. Weiss was on his back, and the Boilers have the ball underneath the basket. It'll come outside to Lewis. In the lane, he goes to Mitchell. Triple team, but he gets the basket. His first of the night, and the Boilermakers lead 26-8 with 9.40 left to play first half. Mitchell playing better power basketball than he did earlier. He was shooting from the outside for the last few games. He's been taking it inside and using the muscle and strength that he has. Jeff Gross out of Warsaw, Indiana, 44% for the field, lays the ball off to Fuller. Now they go to Sean Morris. He has one basket. He fires for long range. It's off the mark. And there is Everett Stevens sky high to pull it down. Lee into the lane. And trying to go for the basket is Melvin McCants. And I guess he charged with the ball, huh? Or walked with it? And they must have called walking or jump ball or something because that I couldn't see the official. We were blocked out from our position, but... Uh, they lose it anyway, and it's going to go back to Purdue. But I don't know what happened to McCants down there, whether he traveled or knocked it off his knee out of bounds. So the turnover, the five-second call, gives the ball back to the Purdue Boilermakers underneath Purdue's basket. 9.09 to play, first half. Lewis and Stevens are at the guards. Purdue's starting lineup back in there. Mitchell or Lee gives it back outside to Stevens. Now to McCants, turns around, fires it off. No, rebounded by Morris. He's fouled by Lewis. Troy's second foul. Lewis trying to go to the backboard against the bigger Morris. And Sean, although he had the inside position, did let Troy slip by there. You'll see him going low as Morris didn't see him. But 6-9 against 6-5, you're not going to win too many of those contests. So the ball will be in the backcourt of the Wildcats. It'll be thrown in by Sean Morris. It comes in to Tim Weiss. Weiss is a 6-5 senior out of Cisna Park, Illinois. Weiss all the way down, short jumper, no. Rebounded by Morris, put up and in. Sean Morris gets his second basket. He is the second Wildcat with two baskets. Absolutely nothing better than being 6'10", going against somebody smaller than you are, and that's what happened is he just went over the top easily. In the back, uh, is too high for McCants, and the turnover gives the ball to the Wildcats, and Pullen brings it down. Stevens is on him, bounces it to Morris. McCants stays with him. Outside to Weiss, Lee's on him. Bounces it inside, Morris goes, and is able to get by McCants and score. Morris has a half a dozen. It is now 26 to 12, Purdue. Lewis, cross court to McCants, back up to Everett Stevens, and Purdue will set it up with eight minutes to play in the half. Purdue's next game will be Saturday at Wisconsin. I don't think the basket. Yeah, they do get the basket, and the foul is on Fullen. Start to say didn't think it was count, but they're going to give give it to him. Well, that's great body control by Todd Mitchell. Watch him move across there. There's the reach-in foul that knocks him off balance as he starts his shot move. It goes home off the backboard. They counted it. Mitchell will go to the line. The chance to complete that three-point play. Second basket for Todd, the six-seven junior out of Toledo, averaging 16-6. Second high on the team, Troy Lewis, the leading scorer, with an average of 18-3. Melvin McCants at 14-6, Everett Stevens 13-2, and Doug Lee at 9-6. Mitchell at the line for the first time tonight. His fifth point, and Purdue is three of three. Substitution. 43 is Jeff Arnold in for the Boilermakers, and 31 is Dave Stack. So the Boilermakers are three out of three at the line, leading 29 to 12. Pressuring all over the court. Weiss with the ball. Gets by Arnold. Lee stays with him. Weiss drives down, lays it off to Gross. Jeff with the 10.2 average is not scored. Hasn't been starting because of an injury, but he is one of two Wildcats in double figures. Sean Morris is the other. Turns around, throws it up, no. Loose ball, who's going to finally get it. Goes through Everett Stevens' hand, now picked up by Gross. Well, the wall, ballmakers are everywhere. Both of these teams are really scrambling and scrapping after that ball. Makes for an exciting game, even though the, court, uh, the score is not very close. Sean Morris knocks it up in the air and goes after it. Here's a bounce on the side. That was a nice play as Gross gets his first basket. That was a beautiful feed inside. 
Gross did a good job of handling it, but you saw uh, as he looked to the basket, he did look around to see where the Boilermakers were because they blocked a couple of those easy shots inside, but he still knocked it home. Boilermakers are up 29 to 14. It was 26 to 8. Lee in the middle. Arnold's shot. Good. First basket for Jeff Arnold. Boilermakers hit the 31-point mark, a 17-point spread. Good shot in the arm for Jeff because he's been struggling with that little jump shot. I know it makes him feel better to hit the first one. Bullen drives all the way and puts it up and in. His first basket. Bullen's a pretty good player, Joe, and he can shoot the ball, but he just hasn't had a lot of luck this year. He's only shooting 38%. I tell you, since the score is 26 to 8, Wildcats have been playing some pretty good basketball. We have a foul going to be calling Kukas. That'll be his second. It's a nice fast break by Purdue as Everett Stevens looked to pass off the opposite direction, dropped it back down inside. Now well, the ball wouldn't drop as Dave Stack put it on the board, but he's going to have a chance for two as the foul was on Kukas. He's been to the line. Stack has only six times this year, made two of them. We're going to have a substitution for the Wildcats, number 44. Don Polite, one of the starters, is going to come back in, the 6'7 freshman out of Western Connecticut. So Stack will go to the line, 6'6 junior out of Palos Park, Illinois. His average is 3-1. Cannot get the free throw to fall, and that'll be the first miss of the night for the Boilermakers after hitting the first three. Lewis was two out of two, and Mitchell was one for one at the line. Stack gets this one to fall. Boilermakers have a 16-point lead. 32-16, a little more than six minutes to play in the first half. Petrovic brings it down. At the 15-foot mark, stops, and has to get rid of it to Sean Morris. He's guarded with Jeff Arnold. Goes to the right, and Arnold put his arm on him. That's three on Jeff already. He has three of the seven fouls that Purdue has been whistled for tonight. Melvin McCants is going to come back in. Well, we've been talking about the fact that uh, Morris is pretty quick out front handling that basketball, and both the, the Purdue centers have tried to put a lot of pressure on him, and they just don't have the foot speed uh, nor the foot quickness to get the job done, and they picked up five fouls between them as Arnold had to go to the bench with his third. McCants comes in to replace him, and Mitchell comes and Mitchell in. Mitchell also came into the lineup. So the Boilermakers trying to get back to their starting group and I believe they have done that now stack goes out we go to the line with Sean Morris shooting 78 percent of the year 45 out of 58 he's up there for the first time and it gets his seventh point of the night Morris has an extremely high arch for a big man normally the bigger fellows don't arch it quite that much you see the little guys do that but he really fires the ball high in the air he has eight points. The Wildcats are two of four now, and the score is 32 to 19 Purdue. Lewis brings it up, and a reach-in foul on Jeff Gross. Foul comes with 5.56 to play in the first half. The Boilermakers were down in this game 2-0, then ripped off eight. It was 8-4, to four, ripped off eight more, 16-4. to four. And then it was 16-6, to six, and Purdue ripped off six. But since then, it's been a pretty competitive game. In fact, uh, the Boilermakers have scored 10, and the Wildcats have scored 13 since that point. It's Purdue's basketball, and Lee will trigger it in. Comes into Everett Stevens. Lee looks inside, goes to McCants, turns, puts it up, scores. McCants, first basket. 34-19, Purdue. Petrovic on the dribble. Lewis is on him. Boilermakers play that man-to-man. -man. Polite with the ball. Lays it underneath. It's off the fingertips of Kukas, and it'll be out of bounds to Purdue. Polite made a nice move, but when he passed it back, the, the man wasn't there. Kukas was on the move as well, and he reached out for it, went out of bounds, and that's been kind of what's happened to Northwestern all year long. Little picky mistakes like that have cost them a lot of points. Here is Mitchell for the baseline. Can't get it. Morris keeps it alive. Great move by Sean Morris to control that rebound. Remember, Sean Watts got hurt very early, and we haven't seen him. Here's the pass inside to Morris. He puts it up. No. Mitchell rebounds. Bodies all over the floor. No foul. Everett Stevens double clutches, puts it in gear, and can't get it to fall, but he's fouled. And it'll be on Jeff Gross, his second substitution. 32, Brian Ross back in for the Wildcats. Everett gets the ball back here from Troy and sees a split between Petrovic and Gross and takes it down the lane. And nobody had 
foot position on him at all as you see Gross being talked to by his coach Bill Foster as he explains the play and tries to help the young man out to be prepared the next time that happens. Meanwhile Everett will be at the line with a two shot foul. 19 out of 29 66 percent from the free throw line five points for him tonight. Watermakers are five of six and they increase the lead at 35 18. Now it is 36 to 18 with five minutes to play. We're in the first half. Here in McGaw Hall, Welsh Ryan Arena in Evanston, Illinois. Bullen fires from way outside and gets the basket. His second of the night. 36 to 20, Purdue. Watermakers looking for their 11th win. Lewis drills it in for three. His second three-pointer of the night. And he has 12. And for 16 consecutive games, he's been in double figures. Petrovic lays it off. Fulham goes down. And now we have a delayed whistle and a double dribble. One official outside didn't see it. The man underneath did. And the ball belongs to Purdue. Well, the Boilermaker bench saw it, and they helped out some as they got the, uh, the call made. Ross comes into the lineup, number 32 for the Wildcats, as they still stay in that 2-3 zone. I guess they feel like they don't match up well enough against the Boilermakers not to be in that zone situation, but certainly looking at the scoreboard, that hasn't worked very well either. It's four minutes uh, plus remaining here in the first half. Lee back to Tony Jones. Lewis looks inside. There's Melvin McCants, tries to lay it off, and it goes through, the official says, the fingertips of Mitchell. Good idea. Mitchell was making the move on the baseline. A Wildcat got between he and the ball, and that's when uh, he just couldn't handle it, but it's a good idea. Well, the makers double team in the backcourt. Sean Morris is able to break. Lays it off here to Polite. He almost lost it. Gives it back to Morris. Inside, Mitchell over the back. First foul on Todd. A one and one for the Wildcats. And we'll be at the free throw line with the Wildcats tonight, two of four. On the year 634, Ross will be at the free throw line. He's nine of 17. His average is 2.8, 6'11 freshman out of Cincinnati. First free throw attempt for him. Somebody said, I got it. Two of them said, I got it. <laughs> well, the bigger guy got it. Tony Jones gives it to Lee. Lee had the ball deflected away, and it'll be out of bounds, and we'll have a timeout first with three minutes and 37 seconds to play in the first half. You're watching Purdue basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The Boilermakers are ahead of Northwestern 39 to 20. Helping the disabled, the homeless, the young, and the old. They do that through hundreds of people helping agencies throughout Indiana and the United States. I hope you join me in helping make this the biggest and best year in United Way history. The agents and employees of Farm Bureau Insurance join Coach Gene Cady in support of United Way. A row over Northwestern and has a 10 and 2 mark against the Wildcats since coming on the scene seven years ago. The Watermakers got off to a quick start here tonight after trailing by two to nothing as the Wildcats came out in a full court press falling back into a 2-3 matchup zone and Purdue has been red hot from the field shooting very well. There you see it 15 of 22 68 percent. Wildcats just can't find the rim. And they're way down in the 30s and that's been tough for them. Boilermakers leading in that rebounding contest 16 to 9. They've done a good job on the backboard. So here come the Wildcats and Elliot Fulham is on the dribble. Tony Jones is on him. He's sticking right with him. Here's a pass underneath. A nice play. There's a foul on McCants as he got close to Ross and that'll be the second foul on Melvin. Three on Arnold. One on Mitchell. Two on Lewis. One on Stevens. Just a little late in making the transition over there. You see Mel got there a little late. Although he was trying to get into position to stop the forward movement of Ross when he got there he bumped him in the chin and hit him on the arm so Ross will go to the line for a one and one as the Boilermakers continue to lead by 19 but it's been a it's been a toughie so far in terms of physical activity Steve Scheffler 
The big freshman from Michigan into the lineup, 240 pounds at 6'8". Ross at the free throw line is able to make his third point of the night. Three of six for the Wildcats. It is now 39-22 in favor of Purdue. We have 320 to play in the first half. The Wildcats are five and seven overall. 0 and two in the league. Lost two road games this past week at Iowa and in Minnesota. A lot of folks will do that. This is Lewis off the mark. Rebounded underneath by Mitchell. Put up and in. Seven points for Todd. And the Boilermakers lead 41 to 22. Double team over there on Fulham. He got it away to Ross, and Ross sent it right back to him. Tony Jones stays with him. Tony Jones really played a great game against Michigan on Monday night. It's an excellent opportunity for Tony to get a chance to run the ball club early in the ball game, and uh, he's doing a good job with it. Polite working into the lane on Lee. Put it up. No. Rebounded there by Troy Lewis for the Boilermakers. He gives it quickly to Tony Jones. Tony from 12 feet. Gets his basket, his second. And the Boilermakers lead 43-22. 2.20 to play, first half. If Purdue had a weakness, I think it was not having a point guard to come in and help out. Tim Fisher, the senior, has done a credible job there, but they were looking for the guy really to lead the club, and it looks like Tony Jones may be able to do that. Here's an offensive foul on Troy Lewis. That'll be his third foul. And he is the second Purdue player. The other is Jeff Arnold. Gene Cady maybe didn't think that was such a good call. Here comes Troy down the middle. And uh, there's not any contact there, hardly at all. It's a very difficult call to make. Troy will have to go out with three fouls, and uh, it was a good effort by Northwestern to be able to get him out of the lineup finally. He's been a thorn in their side. Polite was the man making the play down on the baseline. A little more than two minutes to play in the first half. Wildcats are down 43-22. Fulham is guarded by Everett Stevens. Here's a bounce pass stolen by Tony Jones, but Stevens made the play. Now they come the other way. It's knocked away by the Wildcats. Purdue will maintain possession of the basketball, and a new 45 seconds will be put on the clock, and the substitution, Bo Kukus, will come in for the Wildcats. There he is, 1.8 average, 6'9 junior, Cherville, Indiana. And scored tonight, 0 for 2 at the free throw line. Another substitution now for the Wildcats. Number 11, Terry Buford, 6'4", sophomore out of Indianapolis Cathedral, is in for the Wildcats. He's been in a, once at least before. Mitchell will trigger it in to Everett Stevens. Wildcats stay in that 2-3 zone. Mitchell back to Stevens. Tony Jones, right wing. The middle is clogged. They go to Sheffer out to Mitchell. He drives. Short jumper. Good. Mitchell has nine. Wallamakers have their biggest lead, 45-22. Gross stops. Buford with it. He drives, goes down, and Mitchell gave him a little bump with the shoulder, his second foul. I tell you, Buford is really quick. Little head and shoulder fake and went right to the baseline. There you see Tim Fisher coming in, replacing Tony Jones, who did an outstanding job while he was in the lineup. Played both guard positions, both point and the scoring guard or shooting guard position. Did a good job while he was out there. So at the line, well, the one in bonus is Terry Buford up there for the first time. 12 out of 20 on the year. It's his first point of the night. And the Wildcats are five of eight at the free throw line. Substitution 31. Dave Stack, 6'6 junior from Palos Park, Illinois, is in. And Mitchell will go out. He's had nine points, one for one at the free throw line. Wanamaker's picked up a lot of fouls here tonight. Arnold with three, Troy Lewis with three, both out. McCants has two, Todd Mitchell has two, Stevens has picked up one. So the Wanamaker's have some foul trouble to think about. Pressure by the Wildcats. Several reserves, in fact, uh, all the reserves except one in there. And Everett Stevens with the ball is the only starter for Purdue in the lineup. Stack with the ball, comes way outside to Fisher. To Everett Stevens, Stack is two out of four at the three-point range. Here is Scheffler feeding it inside, and Kip Jones is driving for the basket, and he's fouled by Kukus. Kukus has three fouls. 
Good job by Scheffler to find Jones down on the baseline. That's what McCants was trying to do a moment ago with Mitchell. Nobody goes any harder to the backboard than does Kip Jones. And there you saw him going full boat up there. Couldn't get it in the hole, but he'll have a chance to take uh, two shots there. Chris Berg comes into lineup. This is a young man that is a freshman, was an excellent player for Northwestern, then had a severe knee injury, and it's taken him 21 months to get back. He's number 22. Used to have a 41-inch vertical jump. I tell you what, uh, if I could have had that, I'd have been a lot taller than I am now. Kip Jones at the free throw line has had a little difficulty there this year. 10 out of 21. The Boilermakers are 6 of 7 from the stripe this evening with a minute 5 to play in the first 20 minutes of this basketball game. Jones misses both of them. Taken off the board there by the Wildcats. Buford uh, brings it down, gives it to Fulham. Now to Buford who hustles after the ball. Purdue stays in the man-to-man. -man. Buford out of Indianapolis Cathedral and Gross out of Warsaw, Indiana. Boilermakers have dropped back into their 2-3 matchup zone now. Gross from three-point range, had it deflected by Everett Stevens. It'll be out of bounds to the Wildcats. Or they, they got him on the arm. Okay, that's the second. Well, they may have gotten him on the arm and the body and the left leg and the whole bit. Here comes Everett across, makes the, the good block, but then makes the contact after the play. There you see, got the arms, and Gross made the good play. Went down to the, to the surface, and the official made the call standing right next to him. A good one, and Gross will go to the line for two. A one in bonus, they say. Stack deflected the ball, and Fisher picks it up. Now Everett Stevens checks the uh, sidelines. The shot clock is off. 30 seconds to play first half. Purdue will work for the last shot or the very, very good shot. It's 45-24 Purdue. Well, the makers were down 2-0, but then they ripped off eight unanswered points, and it's been Purdue all the way. We have 10 seconds remaining in the half. Now five. Everett Stevens fires. He didn't get it. It's pulled off there by the Wildcats. And there's the buzzer. And that is the first 20 minutes of this basketball game. The first half of this Big Ten battle between the Northwestern Wildcats and the Purdue Boilermakers. And at halftime, the score is Purdue 45 and the Wildcats 24. We'll check the individual scoring in just a minute. Cats by a score of 45 to 24 as we check the unofficial scoring here in the first half. The Boilermakers have eight players that have scored in the game. The Wildcats have seven. The Boilermakers are led by Troy Lewis. He has a couple of three-pointers tonight. He has 12 points. Doug Lee has nine points. He uh, has a three-pointer. Todd Mitchell has nine points. He's been to the free-throw line once and made it. By the way, Troy Lewis went to the line twice and made both of his. Melvin McCants has a basket. Jeff Arnold has a basket. Stack has one for two at the free throw line for one. Tony Jones off the bench. Two field goals for a total of four. Everett Stevens has six points. He's two for two at the free throw line. Uh, Kip Jones went to the line twice, was unable to score. On the other side, the seven players that have scored for the Northwestern Wildcats are Sean Morris with six points, three field goals, leads the team in scoring. Brian Ross has four points, two out of three at the line. Polite has two field goals for four. Jeff Gross has a field goal for two, missed his only free throw attempt. Uh, Bo Kukus went uh, off the bench. He had two free throws and missed them. And uh, Elian Fullen has a couple of field goals for four points. Terry Buford, the young man out of Indianapolis, went to the line twice and made both of his. I think, Bob, uh, for the key may have been uh, for Northwestern, might have been the uh, injury early to Sean Watts. That certainly hurt them. He got poked in the eye very early. In fact, I think in maybe in the first minute or so of the game and has not played since. Boilermakers have uh, one man, two men in foul trouble. Troy Lewis with three and Jeff Arnold with three. The only man for the Wildcats with three fouls is Bo Kukas. Tonight's game between Purdue and Northwestern is being played at the Welsh Ryan Arena, McGaw Hall. Trying to help out some of the fans. He looked like a basketball player, Bob. Looked like he might have played somewhere, Joe. He was four out of eight and shooting some of them from way out on the court. 
The uh, Boilermakers uh, again tonight burn up the Nets here in the first half as they are leading the Wildcats 45 to 24. Boilermakers had a number of players in the, the scoring column tonight. Again, Coach Katie has used them very well. Boilermakers have, though, had a little trouble handling the ball. 12 turnovers. They normally only turn the ball over 14 times during an entire game. I think you'd expect turnovers in a game like this because they're playing so fast. There you see Northwestern has 11, so both teams throwing the ball into the stands quite a bit. Boilermakers doing an excellent job on the backboard with 20 rebounds as compared to 11 by Northwestern. Free throw shooting is better, but it's still not above that 70% mark for either team. The Watermakers at 67 with 6 of 9, 6 of 10 for Northwestern. On the shooting from the field, Purdue has been red hot, as we mentioned a moment ago. 18 out of 27, 67%. That's tough to beat when you're on the road. Northwestern just can't find the basket. It's 9 of 29, and they've missed a bunch of layups. Troy Lewis has had another good first half. He was named the Big Ten Player of the Week for his performance against Michigan and Michigan State over the weekend on uh, the game against Michigan. He had 39 points. He was 12 of 15 from field goal range, and he missed only two free throws in 15 attempts. Tonight, I noticed that he's 4 of 7 and 2 of 2. He has uh, a couple of three-pointers also. He shot well from the field, Joe, but I think more importantly, Doug Lee has had an excellent first half of play and shot with great confidence. If he comes on strong and can be the fifth player that can get back into that double-figure scoring, then the Boilermakers will be hard to beat. Number five in one poll and number six in another as they begin the second week of the Big Ten play. Purdue leads by 21, 45, 24 here as we begin the second half of play. And when you look at that uh, balanced scoring by these teams, uh, you know why they begin to win basketball games. We'll look at Northwestern. They're not doing that poorly in terms of balance. Eight for Morris, Fullen with four along with Ross. Polite has four as well. Gross with two and Buford for, for two. You got to get more scoring out of Gross. He was not able to get on track there in the first half. He is the only man in that group with two personal fouls. So nobody really in any trouble there for Northwestern. Uh, I think Kukas has three personal fouls, but he didn't score there in the first half of play. For the Boilermakers, uh, they're doing very, very well. Lewis with 12, Mitchell with nine. We mentioned Lee, who had an excellent shooting first half with nine. Stevens with six, Tony Jones with four, and Tony Jones played excellent in that first half. Arnold was able to come up with two. McCants came up with two. See the foul trouble with Lewis picking up three, and Arnold picking up three. And I think Troy would be the one you'd be concerned about, although he is not normally one to commit a lot of fouls. But he's been playing inside, trying to help on the backboard, and that's where he's picked up a number. Purdue's basketball as the second half gets underway. The Boilermakers have their original starters, Doug Lee, Everett Stevens, Troy Lewis, Todd Mitchell, and Melvin McCants in there as we begin the second half. Ball goes inside to McCants. He lays it off. Mitchell sends it outside to Everett Stevens. Fires no. It's rebounded by Don Polite. Polite sends it up quickly, and on the drive, and scoring for the Wildcats is Elliot Fuller. And they start off the same way, scoring the first basket of the second half. Lee ran off and left the ball. Uh, uh, Stevens ran off and left it, and Gross then committed his third foul. Gross had a good opportunity to pick up the ball, but you'll see here on the replay that he just reaches out and gives a shove right there in the back. And when he did that, he picked up the foul. Number three on him, and the Boilermakers retain the ball. Doug Lee throws it in to Everett Stevens. The 2-3 zone for the Wildcats. In the middle is McCants, on the right wing is Mitchell. Here's Everett Stevens going to Lee. Goes to Mitchell Lowe into McCants. He scores. McCants gets his second basket. And the Boilermakers are out front, 47-26. Purdue used the uh, movement to flex the zone and find that opening down the middle. And McCants, anytime he gets the ball down low, is going to score. Here's the ball taken away by Melvin McCants. He took it right away from Sean Morris. It goes down to Everett Stevens. He wanted to shoot, laid it off to Mitchell, and he is fouled by Brian Ross. Or is it uh, 25 Morris? I believe, it, on Ross. I believe it was Ross down low. It was a nice pass coming from Stevens from the outside as he drew the defense to him. And Ross is not going to block very many shots of Todd Mitchell, but he went strong, knocked the ball away, but also got the body, so Todd will have two. Mitchell at the line for the second time tonight. He is 40 out of 57, about 70%. He has nine points in tonight's game. He gets this one to fall. And the Boilermakers are seven out of ten from the stripe and up by 22, 48, 26. Mitchell 
Drops in his 11th point. He's the second Boilermaker in double figures tonight. Purdue pressuring. Gross double team. Gets it away to Sean Moss. Into the forecourt. Don Polite with the ball. Right wing outside is Fullen. Gross and Morris and Ross round out the lineup. That's Ross with the ball. Mitchell is on him. Bounces it off to Fullen. Now low. Here's Polite bounding in. He gets it to fall. That's his third basket. He has six points. 49-28, Purdue. Wanamaker's play Saturday afternoon at Wisconsin. Lewis couldn't get it to fall. McCants got it off, and we have a foul on Sean Morris, which will be his first. McCants had good inside position that time and brought the ball down. Morris going over the top again, out of position, and gets the hand caught in there. Nothing he can do but foul. Mel tries to get the shot up, but I don't think they'll allow that. It'll be out of bounds for the Boilermakers under their basket. And Lee will throw it in for Purdue. It comes out to Everett Stevens. Lewis goes left. Lee fires. Lee can't get it to fall. Sean Morris rebounds. He's the team's leading rebounder at 8-1 a game. We play two minutes of the second half. Boilermakers continue a big lead. Morris underneath. Powers his way in and gets his eighth point. His first basket of the second half. That cuts it to 19. 49 to 30. Purdue lost the basketball. It's a matter of not talking on the offense. Somebody should have told Everett that Morris was coming from behind. The Boilermakers were turned around looking at that. Nobody said anything, so they lost it. Rose into Morris. His second straight basket. He has 10. And it is now 49-32 in favor of Purdue. Here come the Boilermakers. Troy Lewis from about 18. He couldn't get it to fall. And uh, Elliot Fulham pulls off the board. Since very early, Troy has missed a number of shots. I think he hit his first three, including a three-pointer. Doesn't look like Purdue's going to be as hot from the field this time, and they're going to have to start working that ball down inside until that shooting touch comes back. Fullen outside, guarded by Everett Stevens. Stevens with two fouls. Here's the shot made by Fullen. Fullen has eight points. Well, the Wildcats are shooting the eyes of it right now. They've hit... Their last three in a row, and maybe even more than that. That's the how many I can remember. Eight so. unanswered points. The Boilermakers are having some trouble with their defense this time around, and the offense is not as hot as it was earlier. It was up 49-26. Here is the ball off the board, and Melvin McCants battling for it. Commits his third foul. He's the third Purdue player with three. Arnold, McCants, and Lewis. And now the Boilermakers have got some problems, Joe. They've got a lot of fouls. They're not playing well on offense. And defensively, Northwestern is beginning to slip through their uh, setup. So Boilermakers are going to have to get tough right quick, or all of a sudden they're going to have a ball game on their hands. So with 16.42 to play in the game, the ball belongs to the Northwestern Wildcats, who were down 49-26, and now it is 49-34. Eight unanswered points for Northwestern. Gross bounces it low. There is Sean Morris. He lost it, picked it back up. He has 12 points, already three, three field goals in the second half. And we have a foul in the backcourt, and Everett Stevens winds up on the floor, and Gross winds up with his fourth foul. That's four already on the Wildcats in this half. You notice Northwestern has not really used the press against Purdue. I think Bill Foster, as he's talking to Milan Petrovic there, recognized that that just got Purdue in their up-tempo game, and they, did, they didn't want that to happen. They wanted Purdue to play more of a slow, deliberate style. Purdue's lead all of a sudden has dwindled to 13. Lewis fires. No. Lee rebounds. Lee puts it up. What a move by Lee. He has 11. First basket, second half. That stopped a run of 10 by the Wildcats. Lee is a great competitor, and he leads by example out on the court, and he'll get his teammates going. Here is a nice block by Everett Stevens on Fulham. Fulham got it back. Gross has it, and Lewis is on him. Two great Indiana products. Gross missed the ball, and Lee goes hard for the rebound, and he is fouled by Brian Ross, his second foul. Going to have a substitution. Gross is going to go out. Number 33, Milo Petrovic, comes in. Here's the shot again a moment ago by Gross from the outside. Look at Doug Lee. Just competing and hustling very, very hard to get in there and get the rebound and to be a leader on the court. We have a timeout now with 15.54 to play in the game. You're watching Purdue Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The Boilermakers lead the Wildcats 51-36. Think back to last year. Guiding that.
25 to 22 toward the closing of the first half. It, the halftime score was 45 to 24. So that 23 point lead has dwindled now. It is down to 51 to 36. In a moment it will go. It was down to 13 points. Northwestern came out with uh, blood in their eye. They decided they're going to play this Purdue team as tough as they can. And Boilermakers are not quite as sharp nor shooting as well from the field here in the second half of play. Their defense hasn't been as good. Mitchell to McCants. McCants inside and scores well on the feed from Mitchell at six points for McCants. And the Boilermakers lead 53-36. I think Gene Cady has had the idea that maybe they ought to get the ball inside. And certainly they did that. And anytime they get it down low to Mel or to uh, Todd Mitchell, they're going to score baskets. That's goes back outside to Buford who checked in during that timeout. Wallamaker defense looks a little stronger this time down the court. They're playing with more intensity. Buford goes to the right wing. Lee stays with him. Pressures him. 15-14 to play in the game. Here is Petrovic driving and Mitchell, no, it is uh, Mitchell blocking off inside and Stevens getting his third foul as he goes up and gets him on the arm and Lewis was also there. Troy Lewis blocks the baseline here, gives a little help out to his teammate, but then as he reaches across there, Everett Stevens commits the foul with the body, and Petrovic will go to the free throw line to shoot two. As Northwestern had a little more trouble getting the ball where they wanted it to that side that time, and I don't think you need to block really too many of his shots because he hasn't proven thus far this year to be a great shooter. Petrovic misses. He's one out of four this year. Each team has had a turnover in the second half, so Purdue now has 13 and the Wildcats have 12. Petrovic gets one of them. It's his first point of the night. The Wildcats are 7 of 12 at the line. Down 53-37. Wallamakers looking for their 11th win of the year to go to with one setback, and that was to highly rated North Carolina in the Dallas Morning News Classic. Mitchell on a baseline move. He has 13. And the Boilermakers lead 55 now to 37. Back up to an 18-point spread. It dropped to 13. Here's the steal by Mitchell. Everett Stevens and Lewis. Lewis gets it and scores. Lewis has 14. And the Boilermakers have a 20-point lead all of a sudden, Bob. Well, any time Purdue can get into that fast break ball game, they certainly play a lot better, no question about that. And it's keyed off of their defense. They have to make steals, and they have to be mobile on defense. Three Boilermakers in double figures. Lewis with 14, Mitchell with 13, and Lee with 11. Underneath, Sean Morris drives in. He's fouled by Mitchell in the basket will count. That's the third foul on Mitchell. Morris gets his 14th point of the night. Just good power basketball. Ross gets the ball. This is the same play Purdue has been using to get the ball low. And Morris, a good power player inside. Mitchell picks up, picks up foul number three. And now that is one, two, three, four Purdue players, five Purdue players with three personal fouls. Melvin McCants goes out, and Jeff Arnold comes in, and Sean Morris goes to the free throw line for the third time tonight. He made both of his others. He has 14 points on the board. He sends that one sky high for his 15. 8 of 13 for the Wildcats. They cut it 57-40. Boilermakers lose the basketball. Buford comes up with it and scores. He has four points. First field goal. Wildcats, they won't go away. It's a good hustling ball club, and it's a it's a, a trait of Bill Foster's teams. They will work hard, and they will fight you all the way along. Arnold to Lee, outside to Mitchell, and now Stevens will set it up for the Purdue Boilermakers. Purdue, again, I think, will try to work the ball to the inside or at least penetrate the defense and not worry about that uh, outside shot. Lewis drives inside, can't get it to fall in there. It's deflected away by the Wildcats. Out of bounds, Purdue. Purdue 2-0 oh in the conference, having beaten Michigan State and Michigan Saturday and Monday. The Wildcats 0-2, oh having lost to Iowa and Minnesota on Saturday and Monday. Wildcats have played their last five games on the road, losing all of them. They were 5-2 and two when they went on the road. Here's Arnold inside, and he scores his second basket. Wallamakers lead 59-42. Purdue's offensive average is 87.8. The Wildcats, 60.8. Pullen down. Got two. He has 10 points. Here is Lewis. Didn't get the roll. Mitchell got the rebound. He didn't get the roll. There's a battle for it, and there's going to be a foul called on the Wildcats. 
It'll be on Kukus, his fourth. Good hard work inside by Todd Mitchell. He just muscles Buford out of the way, puts the ball back up, and the darn thing won't fall in for him. And there was Kukas on the arm as Mitchell again went to the backboard. As the Boilermakers continue to rule there, remember they won that battle by nine in the first half. It is the second uh, Wildcat with four fouls. The other is Jeff Gross. Kukas and Gross with four fouls. Produce Tony Jones outside. Goes inside low and throws it away. 15 turnovers for Purdue. Pullen brings it back the other way. In the circle, fires, and it won't fall. Lewis rebounds. He's fouled, and the foul will be on Terry Buford, his first. And that is, I believe, seven on Northwestern. Wildcats still battling hard. There's Troy Lewis down inside. Good position. Here comes Buford from the backside. Commits the foul with the body. So it'll be Troy Lewis at the other end. He's been shooting free throws very well. Has hit all of his here tonight. And shooting uh, better than 85% now in the season. He is 28 out of 35. Your host is Farm Bureau Insurance. And it's nearly 700 agents in the state of Indiana. Along with the... Milk Promotion Services of Indiana, your Indiana dairy farmer, and Elanco Products Company, makers of Trefland and Sonoland soybean herbicides. Lewis with a one and bonus. Trickles it in there. 15 points for him tonight. Produce 8 of 11, and the lead is 60 to 44 for the Boilermakers. Troy Lewis, Purdue's best free throw shooter. He is able to drop both of them in. He has 16. Boilermakers lead to 61-42. The lead had dwindled to 13. It had been up to as many as 23. Wildcats come through there. Kukas gets the dribble. Buford with the ball. Has to bring it back outside. Lee stays right with Buford. Go down to Sean Morris. He turns. Makes a move on Arnold. Boy, he didn't make a move, did he? 17 points for him. Good job by Morris. He's an excellent player, and there you saw the kind of move that he could make on the baseline. His best game has been 22. His average is 12.8, and Lewis gets the basket. That is 18 points for Troy Lewis. 39 and 18, the last two, not bad, right? Purdue is up, 63-46. Wildcats come quickly, and Sean Morris gets in for his 19 points. Don't look down, you'll miss something. Wildcats really finding a hole in the back of that Purdue defense. And they've been able to get the ball to Morris. And boy, I tell you, when he gets it down low, you can just put him on the book. He has 13 points in the second half. Troy Lewis bounces it out, and he retrieved the ball. Though. Purdue is lucky to save that one. Lee goes to Mitchell, right wing. Tony Jones to Troy Lewis. He'll get two. He has 20. 65-48 Purdue. Remember Lewis on the performance against Michigan State and Michigan named the Big Ten Player of the Week. They go inside to Ross. No place to go. Comes back out to Petrovic. He drives on Lewis and Troy is able to stop him at least for a while. Petrovic turns around and scores it up there. His first basket. Third point. All of a sudden, the Wildcats are matching Purdue basket for basket. Well, in the second half, the Wildcats have been able to outscore Purdue uh, by five or six points, so the Boilermaker's not winning this half of play. Arnold gives to Lee, drives, can't get it. Arnold goes for it. He can't hold on to it. It's on the floor, picked up by Sean Morris. It'll be three on two. Boilermakers had Lee on the floor on the other end of the court. Here's the ball loose, and it'll be out of bounds to Purdue, but we've got the Boilermakers, Lee, on the other end of the court, lying underneath the basket. I think he had his head stepped on, Joe, and went up to the basket, and they came down and really crunched him. And I think maybe it was uh, the big guy, Sean Morris, who came down right on top of Doug Lee, and they're, they're uh, with his nose right now. Maybe he's got a, a little whack on it. Here comes the play. Made a nice move, shot with his left hand, wouldn't fall. Goes back up for the rebound. And there's where he got hurt, right here. He gets the foot in the face. Well, we have a timeout. You're watching Purdue Basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The Boilermakers lead the Wildcats 65 to 50. Here's that play a moment ago, and it was Ross, the man, getting the foot in the face. Watch it at the lower part of your screen. 
Boom, there it is right there. And by golly, that hurts. There's nothing any worse than getting hit in the nose. And But imagine that when you get a number 15 in the nose, that doesn't feel good at all. There's Doug Lee. And I would imagine he has a, a nosebleed at this point. And I, from the angle where he got hit, it didn't look like he would have broken his nose. He goes out uh, for the moment with 11 points and an excellent ball game. Wanamaker's lead is 15. We're 33 seconds away from the midway point of the second half. Mitchell gives it out to Lewis to Everett Stevens. Arnold is in there along with uh, Tony Jones and Mitchell, Everett Stevens, and Troy Lewis. Arnold comes back outside. Everett Stevens from three. It wouldn't stay in there, but Lewis gets it off and scores his 22nd point of the night. And the Boilermakers lead 67 to 50. Troy Lewis has had games in the last four, 19, 17, 39, now 22. Inside, the ball rolls in off the fingertips of Don Polite. He has eight. 67-52. Boilermakers who have led by as many as 23 and trailed early 2-0. Now have a lead of 15. Lewis to Stevens. Lewis didn't get that one to fall. Came out of there. Polite got the ball off the board and Jeff Gross will bring it up for the Boilermakers, for the Wildcats against the Boilermakers. Petrovich gives it left side. Burke with the ball. Burke comes out of the paint. Lewis knocks it away. Burke gets it back. Inside it goes low to Kukas. He puts it up. No Arnold fouls. Four fouls on Arnold. So the Boilermakers have Arnold with four. McCants with three. Mitchell with three. Lewis with three. Stevens with three. Kukas getting the ball down low. Makes a nice move. Little turnaround. Protects it. Arnold gets under him with the legs. Knocked him to the court. He'll go out. And it'll be Mel McCants wearing number 35 in for the Boilermakers. And so the Wildcats will go to the line shooting two. It'll be Berg. Kukas. Kukas, 23. Gets his first free throw of the night. Eight out of 14. Make it nine out of 14 for the Wildcats. Kukas, not a very good free throw shooter on the year. Less than 50 percent. Boilermakers rebound. Tony Jones gets the ball. A little more than nine minutes to play in this one. That interchange a moment ago when Doug Lee went out. I see they're working on Ross on the other side, so must have uh, gotten a little injury. And Melvin McCants inside gets his eighth point. Lee's getting ready to come back in. Makes a little more than a punch in the nose to keep him out, right? Or a kick in the nose. Maybe that's it. I think a punch in the nose would have felt better. <laughs> Here's the ball low. Berg gives it into Sean uh, to uh, the Wildcat and Lee Kukas, and he's able to power for his third point of the night. 69-55. Mitchell took a heck of a hit down low, and they didn't call a foul on anybody. I, I thought they would call something blocking or charging. He really took a bang. Lewis, left wing, Tony Jones, Everett Stevens looks inside, trying to see McCants free. Lewis will stop and shoot, and it falls off. Battle for the rebound, picked up by Tony Jones. He can't get it. Loose ball. Jones knocked it away again. McCants goes through. No foul on Gross, and he'll be through. That's five on Gross. He'll leave with 8.14 to play. I'm going to tell you, Tony Jones made a great play in there to keep that ball alive, to get it back to McCants. Jones is a real competitor. Here's the shot from the outside. Watch Tony battle inside. Here he picks it back up, goes against Berg, can't get a hold of it. And here he'll come back again and knock it away. And McCants goes in strong. He would have committed the offensive foul against Berg, except for he was fouled earlier by Gross. Morris and Petrovich come into the lineup for the Wildcats. The Boilermakers bring Doug Lee back into the lineup. So Purdue has has uh, its starters in there now. Lee, McCants, Mitchell, Lewis, and Stevens. And McCants goes to the line. You know, Northwestern just a couple of breaks away from being right in the ball game, down by only 14. That could be 10 very easily. Melvin McCants does not get it to drop, and the Wildcats come off the board with it, and Petrovic comes down quickly. Lewis is on him. Well, I tell you, sticky defense now. Everett Stevens almost knocked it away, and Fullen turns around and hits the ball in his face. Fullen is guilty of his second foul. And we'll go to the other end, and the free shot will be forthcoming to the Boilermakers. Offensive foul is going to be called. Well, they don't. They say they're going to be out of bounds, I guess. No shot. 
Bill Foster says, hey, what happened? My guy's just out there playing, and he did bang the ball right off the head of Everett Stevens. I don't think that was intentional, but he did do it. They called a foul on it, and it'll be out of bounds to the Boilermakers. So Lee will put the ball in play. Get a good shot of Lee's. No, he's got it patched up there, stopped up almost. Yeah, they probably have it stuffed with cotton to keep it from bleeding and also to hold it in place if it is cracked. Here's the pass to the baseline to Kip Jones. Comes back out to Troy Lewis. Now to Everett Stevens. Stevens in the paint. Fires. No, bounced it in there. Stevens has eight points. And the Boilermakers are up 71-55. Here come the Wildcats in a hurry. John Morris gets into the lane. Double team. Fires anyway. Gets it to fall. He has 21. 71-57 in favor of Purdue. Here come the Boilermakers. Kip Jones tries to go inside. He can't get it to fall, but he's fouled. And Kukas, I think, is the man who's going to be charged with his foul. See the pass coming down low. The same thing that both teams have been able to do is get the ball down on that baseline. Bang, there he comes from the outside. And did they give that foul yes. to Sean Morris? Sean they Morris, did. that's right. Kukas must have gone up on top of it because he was really flying in there, and Morris committed the body contact foul. So the Boilermakers will go to the free throw line, having hit 9 of 13 tonight. Kip Jones at the line is 0 for 2. It's his first point of the night. Substitution, 32. Brian Ross is in. John Morris's 23 points is the season high for him. Jones at the free throw line. If Jones gets his second point of the night, it's 11-15. We have a timeout with 7.25 to play. You're watching Purdue basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue is ahead of Northwestern 73-57. to play 73 57 the Boilermakers are ahead of the Northwestern Wildcats Troy Lewis with 22 points for Purdue Gene Cady looking at his team from the bench the Northwestern cheerleaders cheering on their squad it's played very well here in the, the second half they've gotten back into the ball game still in this half they lead Purdue by five after trailing by 21 in the first half so the Boilermakers still are looking at a 16 point lead here's Fulham with the ball comes back outside to Ross Wildcats down 73-57 Ross with the ball, looks inside. Here is Morris on the drive and lays it up. And officially, that's 25 points for him. Morris playing excellent basketball for Northwestern. That time, he just ducked his head and went right to the basket. The nice sweeping layup, almost a hook shot, was able to beat McCants again. Here's Lee with the ball. Troy Lewis, up to Everett Stevens, bounces to the outside to Lee, back out to Stevens, to Lewis quickly, baseline to Kip Jones, throws it outside, and it is stolen away by the Wildcats. Now we're going to have a foul on Troy Lewis. He has four. I tell you, turning in to be quite a basketball game, isn't it? I tell you, a moment ago as we watched this replay, the official coming here to make the call uh, spent about 30 seconds with Bill Foster. He's the fellow that called the, the play a moment ago. There you see the contact uh, on the foul on uh, Fullen out on the court when he bumped the head of Everett Stevens. And uh, after that conversation, maybe there's the call that comes back because Troy Lewis now will have to go to the bench as Tony Jones comes in. Troy having a big game at 22, but he has four fouls and there's still six and a half minutes left. And at the free throw line, oh no, they won't shoot a free throw. It'll be out of bounds. And the ball is put in, and Morris missed it. Tony Jones gets a battle for the rebound. Sean Morris saves it, but falls out of bounds. So it'll be out of bounds to the Boilermakers with 6.23 to play, and Purdue up by 14. Morris is all over the court fighting for the basketball. That time he out-hustled Tony Jones, or out-scrapped him, actually, with his size, but stepped on the sideline. Here is a pass, and it goes off the... 
waste of Melvin McCants, and it'll be out of bounds. 16 turnovers for Purdue, unofficially 14 for the Wildcats, and the Wildcats get the basketball down 73-59. Remember, they trailed by 23 at one stage, 45 to 22. Down 45-24 at halftime. Here's a basket missed by Fulton. Take it off up there and put back up and in, and the basket is made by Ross. He has six. And now it is 71, 60, 73, 61 in favor of Purdue. It's got to be a, a troublesome thing for Gene Cady to be thinking about. In the Michigan game, the Boilermakers lost their big lead and only ended up winning by 12 points. Lee fires. He can't get it to fall. There's a battle for the rebound, and a foul is going to be called on Terry Buford. That's his second, and that's nine on the team. And the Boilermakers will go to the line where they are, 11 of 15. Mitchell with good inside position here. Buford will try to go over the back just doesn't have the size to do it. Now you see the contact and the Boilermakers have lost a bunch off of their lead. 11 points dropping down now where they're only up by 12. And you just can't do that in this league against good competition. Maybe you'll get away with it against Northwestern, but I guarantee you when you're playing at Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana, it won't work. Mitchell is four out of four. He has 14 points and the Boilermakers are 12 for 16 from the line. Mitchell. Let's this one fall off. Wildcats get it. In a hurry is Petrovich. Buford with the ball. Looks inside. Lee stays with him. Produced man to man. Buford is able to flip back and can't get it. Their ball has come off the board and the Boilermakers have it. And Everett Stevens gets it. That was a big miss for Northwestern. Really was. Bill Foster was off the bench asking for a technical foul. Somebody's hand was on the rim. Goodness knows who it was because there was about six or seven players up there going after the ball. Everett Stevens to lead to Tony Jones. Out to Everett, looks inside, goes to Jones, right wing. Everett Stevens from three, off the mark. It is pulled off by Buford, throws it long down here for Petrovic. It is blocked there by Everett Stevens. Everett Stevens has ten blocks, he leads the team. Here's Mitchell down the other way. He goes up, no, but he's fouled. And the foul is on Ross, he has three. There is action at Welsh Ryan Arena. Here comes Everett Stevens. This is great athletic ability. Petrovic puts it on the board. Look at Stevens go up and catch it before it hits the backboard. Knocks it away, then makes the pass here. Here's the foul coming up. What a strong move there by Todd Mitchell. But he is hit by Ross, knocks him off target. He'll go to the line for two. He's four out of five is Todd Mitchell. 14 points on the night. He misses his second straight free throw. 74-61 is your lead for Purdue. 4-49 left to play in this one. Todd Mitchell trying to break up. He does. He has 15. And Purdue is now 13 of 19. And the lead is 14. 75-61. Fullen with the ball. Comes out to Buford. Lee is on Buford. Purdue stays in the man-to-man. -man. Four and a half minutes to play in this one. Buford drives to the right side. Gives it to Ross. Bounces it in low. Sean Morris turns. McCants stays with him. Out to Buford. He'll shoot from about 13. It won't fall. Melvin McCants hard off the board. And Stevens will bring it down. 4-18 to play. Purdue by 14. Watermakers need to get that ball back into the middle. They do. McCants can't get it to fall. It's pulled off there by Brian Ross, who gets four rebounds a game. Throws it up quickly. They got a good shot, though, Joe, and I think that's key. Kukas throws it up and in! It'll be Petrovic rather than Kukas. Petrovic with five, and the Wildcats are now down by only 12. 63-75. Everett Stevens to Lee to Tony Jones. Back to Lee. Double team to Tony, tries to get through there. He lost the ball, it's a jump ball. It's Northwestern's basketball on the alternating position. And they are wild at Welsh Ryan Arena. First time in six games, the Wildcats have played at home and they like it here. We're going to have a timeout with three minutes and 35 seconds to play in the game. You're watching Purdue Basketball and the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The Boilermakers are ahead of the Wildcats, 75-63. Can I get up to date? 
There's Buford a moment ago going inside. And I tell you, it's just been a real battle. There you see the hand on the rim, and it looked like it was Todd Mitchell. Still very difficult to to tell, and uh, that's where Bill Foster thought maybe there ought to be a technical foul assessed against the Boilermakers, but it was not. And Purdue continues to lead this one, 75-63, 3:35 remaining, and what looked like a walker all of a sudden is a heck of a ball game. The difference is Purdue is shooting 39 percent of the second half, 11 of 28, while Northwestern is shooting 18 out of 29 for 62 percent. It's almost the reverse of what happened in the first half. You know, it really is, Joe. And early in the half, you could tell Purdue was not going to shoot from the outside, but they continued to bomb it up there from three-point range. And anytime they went down inside and got the ball to Mitchell or McCants, they got something good. Here are the Wildcats down by 12 now. 75-63. Stevens knocked it away. Mitchell gets it. Stevens gets it. He goes down. And it's going to count or no? Let's see. I think it will, or it's going to be a two-shot violation. I'm not sure. Let's see. Here you'll see it, Joe. It goes in. I think you'll yeah, count the goes, basket no. and get a two-shot foul, possibly because it was an intentional foul. There you see the intentional foul. No question about it. It still goes in. And we're going to see him at the free throw line now. And I thought the official said he did hold up to be a two shot yeah. foul. So this is a four point opportunity for the Boilermakers. And that just could be devastating for Northwestern. The Boilermakers increased the lead to 14 now at 77 63 with 316 to play. And Everett Stevens goes to the line. He has been there twice tonight, made both of them. He has a total of 10 points. The Boilermakers, by the way, are 13 out of 19 at the line unofficially. You know, you're down by 12 and then. A play like that, and anytime you're going to foul somebody, you make sure you take his arms off or you, you pin the arms to the side so he can't get the ball up to the hoop. You don't want to hurt the player. But now, all of a sudden, that 12-point lead can go to 16. And Everett Stevens has 11. The Boilermakers have four players in double figures tonight. 11 for Stevens and Lee. 22 for Lewis and 15 for Mitchell. Eight for McCants. Buford comes down and he charges. That'll be his third foul. So all of a sudden, the last 30 seconds, it has not been well for the Wildcats. Well, I think that uh, intentional foul is really going to hurt him. It hurts your emotional idea. Of, and there you see an, another good play by Purdue as they get the offensive foul that you don't get very many times on the road. As Todd Mitchell was in good position, he'll go to the line for a one and one. And I think he hit one out of two last time he was up there. He's five of seven at the free throw line tonight. Mitchell gets this one to fall through for his 16th point of the night. And the Boilermakers go up by 16 now. It was down to 12. 16 points for Mitchell. It's both of them. And the Boilermakers are approaching their offensive average of 88 points a game. Watch the Boilermaker pressure now. Still using that matchup zone, Joe. They're going to try to keep the ball away from Morris. Shot is missed over there by Petrovic. It's bounced around, and the ball is loose. It'll be out of bounds to the Wildcats. Kukas got the rebound and had a good chance to put it back up there. Didn't protect the ball, and Big Mel McCants just reached out and slapped it away. So the ball belongs to the Wildcats. It comes outside to Elliott Fulham has 10 points, six in the second half. But the big gun has been Sean Morris with 25 here tonight. 17 of them in the second half. He gets this one to bounce off, and what a rebound there for Mitchell. And a hand went way up there. Stevens through the traffic. <laughs> I don't know how he kept possession of the ball, but he gets it inside, and the ball falls through, and it'll be Lewis with 24 couple of amazing plays there. The fact that Stevens held onto the ball after he dribbled it off of everybody's feet. And then it was a miracle shot by Lewis. Here is a steal by Lee. And the Boilermakers come the other way, and I think he can put this one away now. 82-63. It got a little precarious there when it dwindled to 12. I think Purdue just had to get it into their minds that Northwestern, although they got that big lead on them, they're still a good ball club, and they could come back on you if you don't concentrate. Stevens on the alley-oop. It is stolen away underneath by Polite. Wildcats come the other way, and Fulham drives down to the baseline, is able to put it up there. No. Rebound uh, taken there by Everett Stevens. Steve. Everett will dribble it down with a minute 50 to play. Everett's done a good job on the backboard tonight, too, Joe. He's really uh, been in there battling with the big guys and pulled down six or seven rebounds. 
So the Boilermakers take some time off the clock. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Lee bounces it to McCants back outside, and it's keep away time. A minute 25 left to play. Boilermakers lead 82-63. We'll go 11 and 1. The Wildcats will go 5 and 8 and 0 and 3 in the conference. And the Boilermakers will be 3 and 0 headed for Madison, Wisconsin of the Saturday afternoon game. Lewis from long range. Lewis with two has 26. His last two games, 39 and now 26. Well, his average in the Big Ten is 28, so he's nearing that just a bucket away. I would suspect he's the Big Ten's leading scorer after two or three games. Less than a minute to play. Polite back to Morris. He fires. He got it. 27. And that is his career high. At 26 against Wesleyan last year. He's 27 now, and that's his best performance. It's 84 to 65. Purdue with uh, half a minute now to play, and the shot clock's turned off. You know, we talked about uh, Northwestern overachieving here tonight, even if they reached the defensive average of Purdue, and they did overachieve. They played a good ball game with 65 points. That average is 66, though, for Purdue as the foul is picked up there, and Everett Stevens will have a chance to go to the free throw line and get near that average of Purdue offensively which is 88 and they're at 84 right now we'll have a one and one free throw Everett Stevens has been there four times tonight and made three of them on the year he's shooting 66 percent uh, Boilermakers make a couple of substitutions Mel McCants goes out Lee goes out Lewis goes out stack comes in Tony Jones uh, Kip Jones comes in Tony Jones is in Arnold is in Fisher is at the scorer's bench, and should Everett Stevens be able to hit both these free throws, he'll get a 19-second rest at the end of this ball game. Everett drops it in for his 12th point of the night. And the Boilermakers have an 85-65 lead. They've been winning by 20-some-odd points a game. This one falls off. Wildcats get it. 85-65, a 20-point spread. Ten seconds left to play. Here's Elliot Pullen. Fires and scores. He's got a dozen. Four seconds left to play. Everett Stevens in the backcourt. Gives it to Kip Jones. And time runs out. And the Boilermakers. Well, I don't know how you describe this one. They had it in control. Let it get away a little bit. And then came back and winning. Going away. Winning by 20 points. And I so suppose if you win by 20, it's an easy victory. But it might not have been. I think they were tested in the uh, latter stages of the half there, Joe, and probably was a good test for them because every game is not going to be real easy, and they had to come back out and say, hey, look, you know, we got into trouble. Now let's get the game back in tow, which they did, and I think that's to their credit, and also uh, Gene Cady, again, doing an excellent coaching job of recognizing the problem and correcting it on the bench. We'll check the scoring and review tonight's game in just one minute. Troy Lewis with 26, Mitchell had 17, Stevens had 12, and Doug Lee had 11. The other scoring for Purdue, Mel McCants had eight, Jeff Arnold had four, Dave Stack had one, Kip Jones had two, the Tony Jones had four. And that's the scoring for the Purdue Boilermakers. We'll check the Wildcats scoring in just a moment, and we'll continue our post-game show in 30 seconds. I really like living in points by Sean Morris tonight who had been averaging 12.8 kept the Wildcats in this game tonight though they lose the game 85 to 67 in addition to the 27 for Sean Morris we have 12 points for Elliot Fullen we have four for Terry Buford we have three for Bo Kukus six for Brian Ross five for Milan Petrovich two for Jeff Gross and eight points for Don Polite here tonight one of the keys, uh, perhaps maybe Northwestern would have done better, but Sean Watts, their 6'1 senior from Harvey, Illinois, who had been averaging 9.1 in the starting lineup, got poked in the eye early in this game, unintentionally by Everett Stevens, who was trying to knock the ball away. So the Boilermakers, led by as many as 23, were up 45-24 at the half, saw that lead dwindle to 12, 